Hey everybody, welcome to the Infinite Regression. This is the place. The place where, you know, you, you look at it and, and you experience uh, a certain revulsion attraction. It's the kind of thing why um, I find it fascinating whenever I assign research papers. There is always, always, there's always a female student who is absolutely fascinated by serial killers. And they're never alone in that. It, it'll always be a significant portion of the class, um, most of which will be female, who will say, oh my God, serial killers, I am fascinated by that. Serial killers and true crime kind of stuff, they are fascinated by. Why? Uh, well, statistically, women are much more likely to die a violent death in our society. Oh, I'm sorry for telling you sad facts about the world, but uh, it's true. You th like women are so much more likely to be murdered by a stupid ex than than men are, because statistically, men are more likely to be the stupid ex. Um, I mean, that's just statistics. I'm not saying that, you know, men are better than women, but in this area of not murdering people, yeah, it seems that women have the upper hand uh, in terms of not murdering people, but the lower hand in terms of getting murdered. Anyway, so revulsion attraction is that thing where you are attracted to things that you find revolting, but you can only encounter them in ways that are safe. So you can watch those, you know, um, what was his name? Ted Bundy uh, documentaries on the Netflixes and whatnots, and you can be interested in it and fascinated by it and also completely revulsed by the idea of it. Yeah, it's the whole thing. It's the whole thing. Anyway, so yeah, you stare into the infinite regression and you're like, oh my God, it just goes on forever. And forever is a terrifying concept. Your brain isn't prepared for it. You just thought you were going to watch a Minecraft video. You are. Look, Minecraft. Who? Something awful. Anyway, uh, life is hard sometimes. Okay, let me tell you about this. Oh, that was very quick load. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Um, anyway, so tell you about this new world uh, that I've created. Uh, first of all, it's patterned after the old one where we used to live. And I, yeah, I can't like, it's so hard for me to say a new world and to not say patterned after the old one where we used to live. It's hard for me to not say that. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Deal with it. Anyway, uh, regardless. <laughs> Uh, so, I started this Minecraft world, I was having a particularly terrible time, uh, things were happening that I was not, you know, a very big fan of, and, um, yeah, and I was, you know, in desperate need of a jolt, a shock to the system. And as my lovely wife has pointed out many a time, that uh, especially these Minecraft episodes, that they are cathartic for me because it is very much like journaling. And I've started a bazillion journals over the course of my life and have been terrible at keeping them up always. Um, the, the only fascinating thing is that, like... Um, <laughs> Well, first of all, I always start journals with great gusto, um, and I'm like, I'd totally do it. I'll totally do it. And, um, you know, I'm going to write in it all the time, I promise. And this I swear to you tonight, I will not ever forget to write. I will keep this journal all the time. Anyway, yeah, and I sing a little, like, Les Mis parody song, uh, terribly, sing it terribly, and, uh, but it's just to me, nobody else hears it, it's fine, regardless. Moving on, 
Uh, I can leave my friends behind because if my friends don't sing and if they don't sing, then they're the 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 ping on their router is like ridiculous. Anyway, takes forever. Their internet is wicked slow. So you gotta sing. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I started this world. I was having a very tough time for a number of reasons. Um, one of which I was feeling like a real jerk because um, I harassed some children on the telephone. Uh, <laughs> and when you put it like that, when you say it as a factual statement, which is technically true. <gasps> Ooh, diamonds. This is my first diamonds in this world. Anyway, when you say it is a technically true statement of fact, it does make me sound like some sort of monster, and you're not wrong. However hard you're judging me right now, hmm, yeah, feel free to adjust that dial as I tell you what had happened. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've always had issues with people being on my phone and whatnot, like... I've always hated it when I get on telemarketer lists and whatnot. And who doesn't? Like, who doesn't? That's, you know, it's one of the more terrible things that we all have to put up with. Um, and nobody likes it, and everybody hates it, and everybody's just like, can we not? And then telemarketers be like, but can I do it with a thicker accent and more out of the country and more scammy sounding and you're like oh god i would prefer that you not and they're like too late it's already happening you'll notice that even though i'm capable of accent work i am not doing an accent right now because you know i don't want to seem racist even though we all know i'm talking about people from iceland anyway uh, so, the, uh, this is a good little vein right here. Oh, hey, my, my bedtime alarm just went off. It tells me that I need to start winding down and getting ready for bed. And, and so it is. And so it is. Anyway, so, yeah, I've always hated it when people are ringing up my phone because, you know, I... I'm a teacher, and I do leave my phone on because uh, multiple times I have been contacted. Uh, you know, my my lovely wife and myself, we are both teachers, and uh, and there have been multiple times our kids are really good at getting sick. They they are like world champions at getting sick. Our first year here, we ran out of sick days. They had to start docking our pay so that we could stay home with our kids when they were sick. True story. It, and it was kind of like, well, let's see how much you love them kids you say you love, huh? huh? Who's going to blink first? We did not blink. We took the hit. Um, anyway, it wasn't that big of a hit. So but Yeah, so not worth it. <sighs> taking care of those kids they're both still alive <laughs> anyway um so regardless yeah um so i keep my phone on at all times because there have been times where all of a sudden i need to handle a situation uh, that arises and that I will be informed of on my cellular te telephonic communicator. Now, my family, let's see, one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, it's ten from the entrance. Anyway, so my sisters have like they would start these group threads and then they would update them because they were all home in the middle of the day and they would just update them in the middle of the day. And it's like, hey, some of us work for a living. And they're like, well, turn your phone off. And I'm like, um, yeah, I can't do that because I have kids that might just start randomly vomiting any second now. Can't just stop what I'm doing because, you know, Senor vomits a lot, might start vomiting a lot. 
So how about you adjust your constant calling of people and stop we'll judging yeah, stop judging how we name our children. Sir Vomits all over the place is very happy with his name. It's named after his grandfather. Anyway, <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's an old family name, and if you hate it, then you hate my family, clearly. <gasps> Ooh, it's red type stone. Anyway. So, how many diamonds do I have? Four. I mean, I could go for some obsidian. I mean, that's what most people do, is it not? That is what most people do. Mm. Yeah, I guess I could. I guess I could go for that obsidian. I'm going to also need three of these. See, this is the I Love You song, and it drives me crazy. I love you. <laughs> you love Minecraft. You're a giant freaking nerd. Hey, Barney, a little less judgment from you would be great. Thank you. It's night, isn't it? Yeah, those are stars, not, you know, J.J. Abrams camera flares from the sun being too bright. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I keep my phone on, and that has caused issues for me in the past. You know, I've finally cured my sisters, more or less cured them of uh, that issue. They have their own separate uh, group chat. And then we have a family, like, we actually have a family group chat on a, um, it's on an app where you can check it at your leisure. You know, you, it doesn't need to be, oh, jeez, creepers, creepers galore. Oh, God, whoa. Woof. That was... That was stupid. I hated that. I hated every part of that. Zero out of ten wouldn't... No, I had creepers blowing up in my face all the times. Oh, the, and here comes several more. And me with the stone sword. Yeah. That's my Craigslist ad. You, big stupid creeper face. Me, stone sword, no armor. Me, telling you to stay the freak away, as I don't like you like that. Um, anyway. But yeah, so we have been having a lot of... Uh, okay, let's just tell you things. My mother, uh has had a battle with cancer this year uh which she's doing fine they removed her kidney the cancerous one they removed the, the entire kidney because the tumor was quite large um which is you know that's never a fun thing to be like ah yes the tumor it was quite large uh but indeed it was you know there's no getting around these very uncomfortable facts. Uh, so, yeah, my mother had the cancer, um, but they caught it, and here's the fun thing, they caught it because she had COVID, and they just ran more testing. They're like, ah, this doesn't, you got symptoms that seem non-COVID-ish. You've got things that seem non-COVID. And it's funny because uh, my parents are extremely religious and they will be like, oh, it's this, this sweet, merciful Jesus looking out. And um, as he doth alway, for lo, he is with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Uh, that's from the Bible, probably. <laughs> you don't know if it is or not. You haven't read the freaking Bible. Anyway, uh, I have several times. And I can tell you that if you had actually read the Bible, y you would um, maybe be a little less like, well, the Bible says, because you would know what's in the Bible and you'd be like, maybe we can't 
put stock in everything the Bible says because like it's got them verses about like your daughter should be forced to marry her own rapist <laughs> like yeah that's in there it's in there 100 percent you know as is the uh you know putting to death of disobedient children um you know just good times just good times great oldies oh oh crap give, give me the beat boys Feed my soul oh i've started a problem that's going to haunt me forever now okay um gotta get over to the high point and tell it to stop stop you like there we go oh god that was not what i wanted in my life i mean come on there are places i remember in my life <sighs> but yeah what was I doing? Oh, I was telling a story about uh, people getting on my phone. So, Easter. Uh, Easter, there were these, there was this uh, Hispanic family group call that I got, or it was a group FaceTime that I got added to, even though I am neither Hispanic nor a member of the family that was calling me. Um, and... You know, people get the wrong number, it's fine. You know, they just need to realize they got the wrong number and be like, oh, I'm sorry, that's on me. My bad and whatnot. And uh, then just move on with your life. But they kept calling and 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 calling, but also... In addition to that, they were calling, and I started to get uh, very upset because I'm like, yeah, I can't live like this. Like, you're like telemarketers. You've got my number, and now you won't leave me the frig alone. Like, uh, that's all we all want sometimes is like, please, sir, may I be left the frig alone? You know, that that's the dream, is it not? Anyway, so, um, they didn't leave me the frig alone. Anyway, I, yeah, I showed them my big white face with, with the, you know, the beard and the whatnots. And, um, yeah, and, and it did not deter them. And at a certain point, I got the sense that they were even having fun at my expense by calling me, which that's not cool at all. Like... I don't need that in my life, and so please don't. And so I just started blocking the numbers, uh, but they kept calling me from different numbers because there were a lot of them. Now, let me say some things. Just, you know, uh, I cannot change the fact that they were a Hispanic family. That is factually accurate. Uh, is it important to the story? Well, it is in the sense that, like, you know, Hispanic families are notoriously large. And they are notoriously loyal to one another, and that is, these are good qualities. I'm not passing judgment on this. I come from a large family, um, and I, I very much respect close family ties. It's a good thing you're not going to catch me naysaying it. That would be ridiculous on my part. Uh... But yeah, just because of the nature of the family and the number of people in it, I was getting constant calls because my number had been circulated among the whole group very quickly. And so this was a problem. And and I tried to make it stop. I was just trying to make it stop in uh, reasonable, nice ways. Like without causing a fuss. I don't want to ruffle anybody's feathers. I don't want to make anybody upset. But I do need to let people know that, like, hey, hey now, uh, you you don't have the person that you're trying to get. 
you know, after the like 14th call in a single night, and these were all FaceTimes. And here's the fun thing about FaceTime is that uh, people can still FaceTime you. Like, let's say that you blocked a number. Okay, awesome. You, you blocked a number. Well, if there's a FaceTime call that involves that number and another number that you haven't blocked, it'll go through. And so, like, you just keep having to block it. And they just kept adding phones and adding phone numbers to this call. And at a certain point, I was like, you have to stop. For the love of all things holy, you have to stop. Like, this cannot go on like this. Like, I, I feel like I'm being harassed and harangued. I feel like this is making a negative impact on my life, like that lava almost did, and yeah, we we can't we can't live like this. Like this, this is not this is not happening. We're we're not doing this. Anyway, um, and in my final statement that night, I did, as a matter of fact, because, um. You know, I, I'm the sort of person who uh, knows how to say swear words. I did say some swear words at them <laughs> because I wanted to be emphatic. I didn't want to be... Oh, hey now. Uh, that's a good sign. You got the water flowing under there. That means that... Uh, yeah, that, that means that it was taking care of the rest of the lava more than likely anyway so yeah and said some swear words at them i was just trying to get them to stop anyway fast forward to the next day and it's happening again and i'm getting like 13 14 calls uh, facetime calls in a row and because apple handles facetime calls differently from other calls it's not the same as, you know, just getting a regular telephone call. And so, um, you know, I wasn't able to block things. It kept ringing through and I was growing more and more frustrated. And so I decided, you know, because I needed to make this stop and I didn't know how to make it stop. And I even looked up things online and none of them involved like, well, what do you do if, you know, someone thinks you're a part of a large Hispanic family when you're not, and you just really, you, you, you have nothing against large Hispanic families, but you would rather they not call you? Because, um, <laughs> yeah, there, that's a very specific problem with not a lot of helpful answers. Um, anyway, so, yeah, I, I could not get them to stop. And so I decided to go on the offensive. And here's what I did. Uh, at first, I was just holding my phone under my computer table so that I could, um, you know, just call them and have it show up as a black screen. And, um, you know, I wasn't going to say anything. You know, I wasn't going to curse them out. I wasn't going to, like, threaten them in any way. I was just going to call them incessantly the way that they were calling me so that they would block my number. That was the hope. So I wanted them to block my number. And so, yeah, I had to be a jerk. I had to put on my jerk pants and do the jerk thing, which I, I spend a lot of time in my life trying not to be a jerk. Um, I do have some jerkish tendencies, I will admit. But in general, I try not to. I try to just not be a jerk. That's that's how I live my life. Anyway, uh, so called the first couple of numbers. No one answered. But uh, the time in which they would hang up on my call grew shorter and shorter. And eventually I was like, yeah, they're probably blocking me. That's good. And... Um, or if they're not blocking me, then they have identified me as a number that they should never answer. Which, if I'm a number they should never answer, then I'm also a number they should never call. Mission accomplished, right? Uh, so I'm hoping the whole list goes like that. The third one 
was this unfortunately young girl um, who kept answering. And at this point, I'd put uh, electrical tape over my uh, phone's camera because it was easier than holding it under the table. And because, like, uh, I couldn't always tell if the person on the other end had hung up or not. And so I would need to look at my phone in order to check. And I, you know, could have my face seen if that's what was happening. And because I'm technically harassing these people on the telephone, I don't need them to see my face. <laughs> I just need them to stop. Because I don't know of a good way to stop. Because I don't, like, FaceTime doesn't tell you, like, oh, so-and-so instigated the call. And so that's the person who got your number and you just need to tell them and then it'll stop forever. You know, you don't get that from FaceTime. You don't get that from anything. Anyway, so, yeah. Um, I mean, at least in, you know, uh, group text messages and whatnot, you can just leave the group easy enough. But, yeah, this one was its own little problem. And so... I was calling them incessantly, you know, called the little girl, uh, didn't call her as many times as I called the others because I was feeling bad. Um, but clearly she got the message that, you know, I wasn't like breathing heavily into the phone. All of my students were like, you should have just breathed heavily into the phone. It's like, no, I don't want him to think that I'm a creep who's not wearing pants. I just want him to think that like something is up with this number. Let's not mess with this number. Like, that's all I wanted them to think. Uh, anyway, and then eventually I got this teenage girl who immediately, almost immediately, like, started saying the swear words directly at me and calling me all manner of terrible things. And, uh, like, she was clearly very upset that anybody was calling that anyone had the audacity to call her phone and to FaceTime her phone when they weren't supposed to be FaceTiming her phone. Uh which, you know, given my circumstance, it was like, well, but you don't understand where I'm coming from and I doubt very much that I could have revealed my big white face to a teenage girl and have been like, hey, you know how you're swearing at my m my my person right now you know how you're swearing at me let me try to calmly walk you through the situation like i i doubt that that would be effective um and so i just kept calling her until she was very frustrated and was threatening to have her father arrest me which is not how arresting people works thank goodness um i recorded an episode about this uh but because I was still in the emotion of the moment, I and also the audio quality was crap. So now it's a lost episode and it's lost forever because I deleted it also uh, because I tried posting it. Um, it didn't post properly. And now now it's just gone. It's gone forever. Um, and I'm OK with that because I was saying things at first. I was like. Girl, if you come this hot and angry at everybody who calls your phone, like, y you're going to end up in a ditch somewhere. Like, you can, like you can't, like, you could talk this way to me because who am I? I'm just, like, I'm basically a teddy bear. Like, people know it. People learn it pretty quickly. I have a hard time keeping that a secret from my students for very long. You know, you always have to start with an angry face and be like, no, I'm a very serious teacher and you will take me seriously. Um, I, I have a hard time maintaining that for very long because they, they figure it out. You know, students are smart. Well, reasonably so. Uh, they're, they're smart with social cues, definitely. Anyway, um, so yeah, like... All of a sudden, I was in a situation where somebody I did not know was, you know, openly swear wording my person. And I was like, no, I don't feel happy. Three. Wait.
Wait, hold up. Did I count wrong? Yeah, I did. One, two, three, mm, 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 four, five, six, seven. This would be eight. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wall this back up because I keep my I keep my minds square, keep them square walls. You know me, you know how I do. Anyway, and yes, I know it's not efficient, but also what I'm about to tell you will tell you everything you need to know about why I mine the way I do. So I was feeling really depressed and terrible because you know. Uh, I started playing Minecraft and I'm feeling like I'm a terrible person because I've just, you know, gotten on the phone and harassed children, essentially, you know. But I'm doing it for a purpose. I'm not just, you know, harassing children to harass children. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get them to, you know, and, and I think there were adults. I think an adult answered one time, but they were very, like, Adults tend to be much more like, uh, it's funny, I, because I'm a teacher, I see the way that kids are with phones, and they're very much like, no, my phone is ringing, I need to answer this. And it's like, well, who is it? I don't know. And that's why it's so important that I answer it. I was like, uh, nah, you, you just get that feature where it automatically blocks everyone who's not in your contacts. And they're like, but what if cute boys call and I don't get the, and like, oh my God, you are r a ridiculous person. Um, yeah, the, the funny thing about teenagers is that there is no such thing as no big deal. Everything is either like less than nothing like so not nothing that you it's you don't even acknowledge it or it is the biggest crisis the world has ever seen it is like yeah and and if you're a teacher and you're trying to tell a student like honest to god i swear this happened one of my colleagues uh tells the story of how um she had a student who was like i have to call my mom right now it's very important and, you know, it was giving the whole, like, crisis mode sounding thing. And, you know, it, it sounded like the kind of thing where it's like, uh, Mom, I had an accident in my pants and I need you to bring new pants. Like, that is a crisis. Like, definitely call your mom if that is the case. Anyway, uh, what was the crisis that this student had? Well, they were an athlete. Uh, who is going to have a sports practice after school and their mom, get this, hold up, crisis time, prepare your brains for the crisis. Their mom brought them the wrong flavor of Gatorade. Oh my God, right? Right? How could you go on? How could you go on? <laughs> Look, and I'm not one of these people who's like, oh my god, this generation. Nope, it's teenagers. It's teenagers. It's not just this generation. It's teenagers in general. I was that way when I was a teenager, and I promised myself that when I was an adult, that if I was ever a teacher, if I was ever in a position where I was working with teenagers, that I wouldn't... Um, take that stuff lightly just because they're teenagers and that I that I would try to be understanding you know and there's so many adults who are like well I never when I was a teenager <laughs> I was like yeah I'm sure you were freaking perfect yeah right right gotcha mm-hmm yep totally uh but meanwhile there are those of us who are telling the truth oh huh, that's why it's not breaking there we go <laughs> Meanwhile, there are those of us who don't mind telling the truth, and we will tell you that, like, many things about teenage nature are very much the same. Uh, some of the platforms in which they are doing things have changed. 
you know, it be on the phones now where it used to be face to face before. Meh. That's, you know, it's a slight change. It's not a big change. Like, just deal with it. It's, it's fine. Whatever. Oh, I got 55 obsidian. Dang, I can portal my portal to the portal time. And, you know, only find... Uh, you know what's funny? I've never been to the nether in 1.6.5, which is... There's a massive update to the nether because it's cow people and not pig people. And it's, you know, netherite. And you... Wait, what's moving me? Oh, a slime! A slime done hath spawned in my mind. That's a magical moment, your first slime in a mine. Anyway... It is. It's a magical moment. Magic moments when a slime has spawned. Magic moments. Uh -huh. Yeah, the, the funniest lyric in that song. The time when the floor fell out of my car when I put the clutch down. Like, what? What kind of a crappy car are you driving, sir? The floor fell out of the car when you put the clutch down? What? That sounds like a terrible car. Please, please get your money back. Anyway, regardless. Yeah, now I've got my mom. Um, my mom. You are not my mother. You are my <laughs> wife. Oh my god, I just called my teacher mom. I just called my teacher mom. No, I, I mean, it's that thing where I refer to my wife as mom all day in front of our children. <sighs> anyway, regardless, she's basically my mom. I'm basically a petulant child. Let's all agree on that. Am I right? You know I'm right. Anyway, I, I forget what I was going to say. Oh, I was going to say that I got a song stuck in her head that she doesn't know all the lyrics to, which is always delightful when that happens to anyone. <laughs> like, this is just going to... People love that. People love that. Yeah, just, just sing songs that you don't know the lyrics to. <laughs> Get your motor running. The motor, it is running. Cause I was born to be trouble. Pretty sure that's the song. <laughs> anyway, regardless. Oh, hello, the outside world. Um, I need to. Oh, I should have brought my bouquet. My bouquet residence lady of the house speaking. Anyway, regardless, I'm just gonna get this taken care of. Okay, you know what? I've never... Flowers in the then times. Could you make... You could make dye. I didn't even know that. In 1.0, you could make dye? Wow. Because the beds are all red. I didn't think... Anyway, regardless. Well, color me impressed. Yeah, you can make all kinds of colored things. Anyway, uh... So yeah, I'm gonna just start shoveling for a reason. Because I feel like shoveling. I shovel well. I shovel very well. I shovel better than any man you've ever known. But it does not make me a superhero. Anyway. So, yeah, uh, back to the story. So, I was feeling bad because I had harassed children so much that they were cursing me out. And I felt like a cursing me out was kind of justified. Like, um, because, you know, I did, like... Here, here's what happened. Like, wh when I first started recording the episode... I was very much like, oh, girl, if you're, if this is the tone you take on the phone with strangers, you're going to 
wind up in a ditch someday because you got too smart of a smart mouth, smarty mouth. And, you know, but then I, I, was, I was thinking about it because, like, I'm... I, I advocate for women and I think about women, you know, and the plight of women more than a lot of people. Well, more than a lot of middle-aged men, shall we say. Um, because reasons. I don't know. I don't know how I became... Like, it's funny because I, I do hesitate to call myself a feminist often because of the... Uh, the connotation of your standard male feminist who's like, no, let me teach you how to really get feminist, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, it, there's, yeah, male feminists can really, really piss off the female feminists for reasons that I completely understand and agree with. Because you're a feminist. Because <laughs> I'm a feminist. And me saying that makes it even worse. It's not making it better, it's only making it worse. Um, so yeah, these, these are things, these are things we deal with. I keep forgetting the entire point because I keep talking and talking is distracting. Anyway, so yeah, um, I actively try not to be that feminist, but I, you know, I do consider myself a feminist in as much as like, here's my feminist credential. Um, I have actually read a fair bit of feminist literature. Where is my copy of the Feminist Mystique? It's on that bookshelf right over there. Um, I'm a big fan of, uh, Gilbert and Gubar and Mad Woman in the Attic, you know, because I'm an English major. And so, of course, that's a book that, you know, is influential in my life and in my thinking. Um, but yeah, you know, fan of, of feminism, a big fan of intersectionality as a concept, uh, to be used across a wide variety of, uh, humanities, you know, fields within the larger, you know, humanities area, uh, very, very fruitful, uh, theory that, you know, is so helpful in conceptualizing identity. Anyway, yeah, big fan. Big fan of feminism in general. Um, and so as I'm thinking about this girl and I'm like, you know, I, I think about all the times that I have said that women have it harder um, in life in general. In my classroom, I will say this and then always, Always, I will have a male student be like, yeah, how? We have to pay for stuff on dates, you know? It'll always be something like that. And it's like, well, you're going to make more money over the course of your lifetime, so maybe you should, number one. And number two, I mean, in general, not specifically uh, men do. That's a, And also, yes, I'm aware of what Jordan Peterson has to say about that and whatever. Uh, anyway, regardless, I know the common arguments against that, uh, but we're not getting into that right now. Where my brain went was like, you know, the, the thing that I always tell boys whenever they're like, girls don't have it that much harder than we do. Uh, I ask them like, hey, uh, at what age did you learn that you should interlace your keys into your knuckles when you're walking to your car at night? And they're like, what? And then I'm like, girls. And they're like, and the girls be like, 12. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, uh, and they're like, well, why do you do that? And I'm like, um, so you can punch rapists with keys in your fist and do some damage so that you can get away. Like, these are things that we teach girls rather than, you know, teaching young men about things like mm, consent. <laughs> we're teaching the young women about like, if a non-consensual sexual partner is coming at you, uh, punch him with keys in your hand <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, just one of many reasons why it's harder for women out there 
than it is for men. And these are things that a lot of men just never think of. They just literally never think of these things because you don't encounter it. You know, it's very much like, um, you know, whenever there's a, a cause that has a walkathon, you know, like who shows up at the walkathon? It's always family and friends of people who have whatever ailment that it is. It's doctors who treat that ailment. It's, um, you know, survivors of that ailment. That's who shows up. It's people who have skin in the game is who shows up, quite frankly. And, um, you know, that's not a... Okay, let's try that again. It's not a bad thing to show up for things that you have skin in the game for. It's very much human nature. Um, but sometimes there are things that we need to realize about the plight of other people. And this, you know, is especially true in issues of race, gender, and sexuality. Um, you know, the, the big issues we, we need to be able to empathize. We need to be able to understand. We need to be able to uh, put ourselves in someone else's shoes. And so the funny thing is, in the Lost Minecraft episode, if you had heard it, first of all, the audio would have been like, <laughs> Yeah, my apologies to your headphones if you're listening to this with headphones. My one person who actually might listen to this and will most likely not be listening to it with headphones on because pff, even though he has a pair of really, really, really nice headphones, he doesn't put them on his... Anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to berate my, my lone member of my audience. Anyway, so, yeah. Harder for women. And... uh. So as my brain began to think about that, I'm like, because I was very upset that she was so rude to me, um, not knowing why I was doing what I was doing. And what I was doing was I was, yes, intentionally being a jerk, but with the express purpose. And I think that today, I think because uh, someone, uh, someone called as I was giving... Uh, like I was setting up to proctor the AZ Merit, which is the stupid standardized test that we have to give that's a worthless metric, a, a highly flawed metric for telling what uh, student skill sets are, whether or not they've acquired the skills that we want them to acquire. It's a, a, a bullcrap government way of doing things. It's like, will this give us accurate information? No. Will it give us a number that we can point to and then deny you future school funding? Yeah, but, well, the yeah is all I wanted to hear. <laughs> anyway, welcome to education in America. Uh, yeah, so I was proctoring this stupid test today that I've been prepping students for for a while. And uh, hate this stupid test, hate standardized testing in general wish that uh, we would ever look at, you know, any of the Scandinavian countries who are kicking our butt in education and say, hey, what are they doing? Oh, it's project-based learning that is um, multidisciplinary and is based off of student interest. CTE, yeah, that's what CTE be all about, except for it's even like, it's like, it's like hardcore CTE. It'd be like way more of that. Um, CTE is career and techni technical education. So all of the things, if you're an older person, uh, all of your shop class, agriculture classes, you know, autos, welding, uh, business, graphic design, um, culinary, all of those things fall under career and techni technical education because they're um, trying to give students the uh, career and technical expertise to, you know, begin working in those fields right out of high school if they need to. And actually, there is a growing demand for a very short-term uh, certification type of uh, employees. You know, uh, we need, like, people with 
just, you know, technical skills in only a couple of medical things. That they're, you're just going to do these two things to help out in the hospital, and you're going to do these two things and these two things only. And it'll take you six months to learn how to do it, and then you'll just do this, and that'll be what you do from now on. And you'll be, you know, in demand because hospitals need people to do the thing. You know, there's plenty of that now, and it's good. You know, the, the demand for traditional college has diminished uh, with this generation, and guess what? That's the fault of college. College has shot itself in the foot by getting more and more expensive while not necessarily providing a better and better product. Unless, of course, you're, you know, like my nurturing mother, which is what alma mater stands for, which I learned in the humanities, which are absolutely worthwhile, even though my alma mater doesn't seem to think so because they put us in the freaking basement and don't fund us. <sighs> Nobody puts English in the basement. Anyway, um, so yeah, um, there, there's just much more of a demand for uh, the type of employees who just go to one of these, hey, get your uh, diploma very quickly and then be working. And, you know, and then they do it and good for them. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, if that's where you're going to spend your employment, good for you. Like, we can't, you know, I watched a very interesting um, video on, like, all of the problems with the American education system. And some of them were, like, really accusatory on teachers like myself teaching, quote-unquote, worthless things like how to write an essay. Uh, which, I would argue, how to write an essay is not worthless. Understanding how to organize your ideas and present them in a logical way not a worthless skill. Certainly not a worthless skill. Um, it, it's just that sometimes people don't see the forest through the trees. They don't understand the skill that they're learning as opposed to the task that they are being asked to complete. And any educator will be able to explain that there's a large difference between the two. Um, you know, all of those people who are like, Ew, I'm, I'll never need math. You know what? Like... I finished all of my high school math uh, as a sophomore. And when I say finished high school math, I mean my only other options from then on out were to take college math courses. And I said, no college math courses for me, thank you very much. Um, I'm good on math. Because I, you know, I was decent at it, but I didn't enjoy it. I didn't have fun doing math. I mean, there's a certain level of accomplishment that you feel and I've talked about accomplishment on this channel before and how uh, well and satisfaction how, how it might be more worthwhile than happiness itself anyway regardless uh, but the fact of the matter is like okay how often do I use like how many matrices have I augmented since high school Oh, the answer is exactly what you expect. Zero. But am I going to be willing to say that the time I spent augmenting matrices was worthless? No. God, no. No a million times no. Why? Because it's not necessarily about the math. It's about critical thinking. It's about problem solving, complex problem solving. It's about, you know, uh, learning to stick to something. I hated augmented matrices because I, you know, it, it, they're not hard. It's, it's not a lot of, or it's not hard work. It's just a lot of work and you just have to be meticulous in your approach to it. And I, you know, uh, have been known to be a sloppy worker. Um, people know this about me it is known Khaleesi and so it made me confront one of my great weaknesses and you know it made me uh learn to problem solve in a very meticulous way which is not how it was normally problem solving and so even though I haven't used that specific skill 
since high school. Um, I haven't used the augmenting of matrices. I have used the critical thinking, the problem solving, those skills. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, can't we learn those in other ways? Uh, yeah. Go ahead and devise a better way. Because here's the thing that is happening. There's a really interesting... Um, yeah, there was a really interesting study where I always say there's an interesting study because there was. Studies are interesting. Read them. Actually read studies. You'd be surprised how interesting they are. Anyway, um, so there was a man who uh, he was a an eccentric millionaire. <laughs> I know that right there this story sounds ridiculous and stupid. I heard it on This American Life on NPR, so feel free to look up this episode. Um, cause they always have them archived. So you can fact check me and see if I'm lying to you. Anyway, so this man, eccentric millionaire, um, was, uh, once in a community center and saw that they were teaching, uh, GED classes. And he's like, GED, what's that? And they're like, well, these are people who didn't graduate high school. And so we sit them down for two months and we work with them for two months, and at the end of the two months, uh, they get the equivalent of a high school diploma. And he's like, wait a minute. Hold the phone. He's like, you're saying that the entire high school experience can be boiled down to two months. Because, I mean, some parts of the high school experience, you know, going to prom having a crush on someone like you can experience uh those kinds of things you don't need high school for you to be disappointed by a dance date you can be disappointed by a dance date uh you, you know just find another place that's having a dance date you know and and go to that and just be you know build it up in your brain way too much as to what it's going to be and then be slowly disappointed as you realize that it's nothing like what you thought it was going to be and that it couldn't possibly have been and that maybe you should set your expectations lower uh -huh. prom you're so great anyway regard oh kitties oh. what'd she do no it's just leo's in the box i think it's kind of yeah, we we got we got kitties in boxes. We got a kitty in a box. That's a kitty niner niner oh, in a no. box nine niner. Oh, kitties are mad that other kitties are in boxes. Oh, jeez, come on, kitties. Anyway, um. Yeah. Our, how large her teeth are. Yeah, Kitty has a head like a lion. Um, anyway, and teeth very much like a lion, but she is ever so gentle with us. It's the other kitties. The other kitties that are not, like, the other kitties are like, but we were so happy being just us. Why must you bring other kitty into this? And funny enough, like, that's how our outside kitty feels about it. Because he's like, I was an inside part of the time kitty. And now I'm an outside all of the time kitty. And it's y'all's fault. It, yeah, these kitties and their complicated emotions. What are you going to do? Anyway, uh, back to the lecture at hand. Perfection is perfected. So Wait, anyway, that's not what the lecture was. Um, so what I was talking about was this guy was intrigued because he's like, wait a minute, we, as America, we spend how much tax money on education? And if you're telling me that we can knock the whole thing out in two months, then like, why don't we do that? Let's just get like 14 year olds into the workplace and not waste time diagramming sentences, you know, and, and learning augmented matrices and crap. And, uh, yeah, that sounds like an excellent plan, sir. Y you, you seem to have the entire thing figured out, except for 
He was very surprised. Uh, he funded a study to see if, in fact, um, the GED was comparable. Uh, people getting their GED. Was it comparable? Did they go on to equal success in life? No. No, they did not. Well, wait, hold up. But they're getting a high school equivalency degree. Yeah, they are. 100% is totally equivalent. You can show up at McDonald's and be like, hey, I have a GED. And McDonald's will be like, yay. <laughs> can you put on these smelly clothes and berate the customer? Anyway, <laughs> tell them that the... Uh, Tell them the shake, the ice cream machine is broken. Tell them that you're out of whatever it is that they order. And somehow we stay in business. And we claim that there are millions served. Even though, what were they served? Was it the thing that they came there to get? Can you tell me that for certain? Anyway. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, he funded this study to find out uh, whether or not we were completely wasting our time in education, which is a question that's worth asking. Like, look, I'm not afraid of questions. Never have been, never going to be. Um, because if something is worth keeping, it should stand up to rigorous questioning. It should. You, kn you know what doesn't like rigorous questioning? organized religion <laughs> they're like uh, you'd be like hey why don't you pay taxes and they're like shh let's not talk about that right now and you're like um but it seems kind of important for me to talk about it seeing as how like y you actually have political power now and you can tell your people how to vote and stuff and do as a matter of fact tell your people how to vote and quite frankly, I don't give a crap whether they're saying like, hey, vote Republican or vote Democrat. Like, I don't give a crap about that part. I care about the part where, uh, you know, an entity that does not pay taxes is affecting the outcome of our elections, potentially. Like, hey, that that's not a thing. I don't like if Joel Osteen isn't paying taxes and he making piles of money off of telling people they can make piles of money by sending him money. Wait, what? That sounds... Did I say that right? I can't possibly have said that right. Just kidding. I know I said it right. Because it's kind of a scam. Um, and yeah, my, my brother, who is a Catholic priest, would be the first one to tell you. He'd be like, hey, Catholic priest brother, is Joel Austin a scam? And he'll be like, oh, the scammiest. He'd, like, he'll start frothing at the mouth and his eyes will start spitting blood and whatnot you know catholic priest powers anyway <laughs> uh so yeah like anything that's worth keeping around should be able to stand up to rigorous questioning that's that's just a fact like um if existing power structures are worth keeping, they should be able to stand up to questioning. People should be able to say, why? Because it is the nature of all institutions and organizations over time to begin to exist solely for their own benefit and not for the benefit of the people they claim to serve. It's true. And I'm not saying that all organized religions have necessarily jumped that particular shark. I'm saying that it's the tendency of organizations to jump that shark. And a lot of religions have been around a long time. And uh, what I'm saying is that if they are worth uh, their weight in, I don't know, tin, whatever the crap they're worth their weight in, they should be able to stand up to rigorous questioning, you know, hard questions like, hey, are you providing the benefit to society that you claim to be providing? And also, why don't you pay taxes? You know, like, and if you can't give us a solid answer on that, then maybe it's time to change things around. This basic stuff, basic stuff. So school, I'm a teacher, you know, and am I willing to have my very livelihood threatened by people asking questions yeah sure why not why not like seriously why not 
Anyway, uh, and I and I'm I'm not kidding about that. Like, I don't hold it so sacrosanct that I cannot uh, see the fact that like it's all worth questioning. Are we doing it in the best way? No, we're not. Currently, no, we're not. American education. Are we doing it in the best way? No says someone who has seen what the research says and can tell you that we're not. Who's doing it in a better way? Mmm, Finland. <laughs> like, could we go to Finland and say, hey, Finland, how are you doing it? And can we do it that way? Yeah, well, we could do that, but we don't. Why don't we do that? Because we're America. And I know that that's not a good answer, but that is legitimately the answer. Um... Anyway, I gotta go sleep in a bed real quick so that um, jobbies don't come and gnaw my face off. Oh, not a real bed. <sighs> yeah, not a real bed. Bleh. Not, I'm gonna go sleep yeah, bed. yeah, I'll go sleep in a real bed soon, but I'm going to, you know, finish my little my little jaunt here, my little jag, my little you know rant that I'm on. Anyway, so this man was asking the hard questions about education, which, like, sure, ask away. Like, all of the great advancements in education, like, you know, uh, should there be freely available education is made available even to people of the lower classes? That used to be a question. And the answer, as it turns out, is yeah. It gives people opportunity for advancement in society. It's the easiest ticket out of poverty. It's education. People know that. It is known, Khaleesi. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Big fan of education, but I'm also not above saying that we should ask the hard questions and stare the answers in the face and own up to them. Anyway, so this man was asking a very hard question. Are we wasting our time? And as it turns out, no. Because there were things that your traditional high school students were doing much better in than your uh, GED students. And, um, yeah, the, the businessman who... Uh, funded the study uh he called these um executive skills i believe he called them uh what it is is it's a a number of skills that you acquire um you know i i tell my students all the time anytime i assume uh, i assign them group uh group work i always hated group work in high school because i always did most of the work and everybody else slacked off and benefited from my work. And I tell my students, I'm like, hey, this is great practice for the real world. And they'll say, how? And I'll say, well, imagine that this was a workplace and that you were all getting paid. And that the person who was slacking the most was also the person getting paid the most. And they said, you're kidding. And I said, no, that's what being an adult is like. <laughs> Because someone needs to tell them, by God, if I'm not, yeah, I, if I'm going to let them go out into the world and think that, like, you know, that the system is fair, huh, it's not. Like, everything we know about the system tells us that the system is not fair. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there are things like that, these executive skills that high school students in traditional high schools learn. As it turns out, the most important things that they learn are not things that they are specifically taught in the lessons that the teachers give, which is why I veer out of those lessons all the time to try and focus on some of these executive type skills. There is, in fact, a method to my madness um, because, you know, people often do think that I'm outside my dang head when I am teaching because I have a tendency to veer off into, you know, I, I'm a firm believer of like, if a student wants to know something, like take advantage of the fact that they want to know something and try to teach them what they want to know when they want to know it. Like, cause why wouldn't you, you're purportedly an educator. So maybe do some of that educating that you purportedly do anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah. 
So this man put forth the hard question, found the answer is that, no, we're not wasting our time with school, but you can, in fact, help people who get GEDs to catch up. You just need to give them some of those experiences that they missed out on by not going to traditional high school or not finishing traditional high school. That is the point. Uh, so those things are actually important. Now, I happen to believe that other things are important as well. Things that people don't put a lot of stock in, uh, I tend to think are important. You know, uh, I have a degree in one of the humanities. Uh, English, is it a necessary field? Well, it doesn't build the bridges and it doesn't, um, you know, grow the food in the fields. You know, there are a lot of things that it doesn't do. But I will say this, that the humanities in general, the arts, the philosophy, uh, the literature, these are the crowning achievements of societies. They aren't frivolous pursuits. Like, uh, you know, when you've read Guns, Germs, and Steel, and regardless of whether or not you're like, well, I think his central premise is incredibly flawed because I have a degree in anthropology, and so I'm going to stare down my nose at this, even though, like, he's won more awards for a book on anthropology than anything I've written, certainly. Um... <laughs> Oh, academia, sometimes you're the silliest of the geese. Anyway, so, um, yeah. Guns, germs, and steel. You learn that uh, agriculture brought us specialization. That as we entered a type of society where not everyone was a hunter or a gatherer, that we were finally able to uh, branch out and that we were able to have people be blacksmiths and people be coopers and tanners and carpenters and uh, all the things, tailors and you know all of the fun professions, old-timey professions that became people's last names. Yeah, those things uh, are things that people were able to branch out into, but you know a society is doing well when it can support frivolous things like art. You know, seemingly frivolous. I shouldn't say frivolous. Seemingly frivolous. You know, because what benefit is there to literature? And what benefit could there possibly be? Let's say that you're a mechanic. What possible benefit could there be if you're an auto mechanic and you know how to analyze poetry? Well, I would turn the question around and I would say, why wouldn't you want your mechanics to know about poetry? If these are the crowning achievements of society, if this is the, the greatest that we come up with, if these are the things that we are only able to do once we have met the needs of the populace so well that uh, we are allowed to have people do things that provide, uh, the, the, whose only tangible benefit is, you know, those higher level, um, you know, we are, we are Maslow's hierarchy wise, we are, you know, in the self-actualization quadrant. Well, it's not a quadrant because it's not four parts in Maslow's hierarchy. Anyway, the, the top of the pyramid. We're, we're right there with the self-actualization, you know. And, and it's a good thing. It's a good thing for a society to be living large on the self-actualization front. So, um, yeah, very much a fan of the humanities. I don't think that they are frivolous. I don't think that, yeah, the arts, the humanities, uh, th that they are, um, you know, worthless pursuits. Certainly not. Um, do they get the kind of 
funding that science gets and engineering gets and medicine gets. No, they don't, and they never will. And, you know, quite frankly, given the uh, very tangible, real, and in many cases, immediate benefit to society brought on by things like science and engineering and medicine, like, okay, I know my place. I'm not curing cancer with poetry analysis, but I am making the world better. Oh my God. One, one of our inside kitties got outside. She's trouble. She got outside twice. She's a troublemaker. I will scold her soundly. Anyway, she is a super cute kitty. She's so freaking naughty. So naughty. Anyway, uh, so yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, is there benefit to the things that I do for a living? Yeah, there certainly is. And, and quite frankly, uh, one of the greatest benefits that I provide is something I've talked about before. I get all the freaks and geeks in my classes. I get people who don't belong anywhere else, who don't fit in anywhere else. And I take them in, and I give them a home, and I say, hey, whatever weirdness you're bringing to the table, it's okay here. Let that freak flag fly. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to be able to do that. Because guess what? Uh, you know, if we were in a hunter-gatherer society, nobody gets to let their freak flag fly in a hunter-gatherer society. Everything is purely utilitarian. Like, are you hunting? No. Are you gathering? No. You're making yourself a goth-style tunic? Like, what? The goths haven't even been invented yet. We're a hunter-gatherer society. What the crap is wrong with you? Oh, the creeper is on the loose. I've got to run like the Dickens. Remember Dickens, he was known for his running. Anyway. Yeah. So, anyway. Let me just get down into my mind, hit this bed, and then I'm going to hit my other bed, my actual real life bed. <sighs> there we go. Safe and sound. Yeah, I really miss running. I wish you could run in Grognard Minecraft, but you can't. Version 1.0, no running. Whew. What do you do? Anyway, people. So, yeah, I'm a firm believer in the arts and the letters, the humanities. These things uh, are very important to me. Uh, because they have brought so much benefit to my life. And I often think, like, man, if if I've got, you know, like, one mechanic out there who reads poetry and is like, yeah, this is my jam, you know, enjoying the beautiful things uh, that our society has created for no other purpose than that they are beautiful and that they are artistic and that they are a form of expression that we can only get when our society is doing well enough, when we have enough mechanics, when we have enough tradesmen, you know, plumbers and electricians and carpenters and all, all of those very necessary things. Only when we have enough of them are we allowed to have people who are like, interpretive dance maybe and then the rest of us say i don't know let's see what you got interpretive dance and then we see those weird gyrations and we go ehm, can you write poetry <laughs> at least that's me that that's the way i am don't tell martha it's a secret anyway people uh fantastic awesome uh, yeah, proctored that AZ merit. Oh, yeah, this is the point. This is doing that stupid test that I hate so much and that my students hate. 
and that every one of us is right to hate it. You know who doesn't hate it? The Pearson Corporation, who makes piles of money off of us taking the stupid test. And you know who else doesn't hate it? Uh, the politicians who don't understand education, who haven't been inside a classroom since the year that started with the 19. You know, people who are as dumb as Scott Walker. Remember Scott Walker? He drives a truck. Anyway, Scott Walker actually was like, I should get, we should get rid of teachers' lounges because we need our teachers to not lounge. To which every teacher was like, where am I going to make my copies? <laughs> like, you think we're lounging in there? No, we're getting work done in there. That's literally like, I swear to God, people don't understand what I do. And then they make the policy about uh, regarding what I do. And what do they need in order for them to understand what it is that I do? Oh, they need a hard and fast number that they can point to and say, mm, this is not enough. We need this to be more. It's so freaking stupid. Meanwhile, teachers in Finland are like, hey, student, what do you want to learn? And how can I help you get there? And how can I pique your interest in other things that might be related and like help you branch out and get the best possible education out of things that actually interest you? Can you imagine Students learning things that actually interest them. That's why I teach Titus Andronicus. People all the time be like, why do you teach Titus Andronicus? And why do you teach Gilgamesh for that matter? Uh, first of all, Gilgamesh has a lot of sex in it, um, which gets the boys' attention. Um, it does. Uh, but Buried underneath it is the oldest story in the history of the world that anyone ever thought like, hey, this is a good story. We should write this down. And yeah, this is a great story. And and what's the story about? Well, ultimately, it's about a man having to confront his own mortality, the fact that he's going to die someday. And that's a universal concept. And so underneath all of the, you know, battles with monsters and sex, and, yeah, the sex and violence, which is what gets people in the door, there's this story that's about how do you deal with grief and loss and how do you deal with the fact that you yourself are going to die someday? Like, don't you want to know answers to those questions? And, and aren't you going to be surprised if people struggled with that the same way thousands and thousands of years ago, the same way that we struggle with it now? Like, absolutely you want to know the answer to that. And Titus Andronicus, like Titus Andronicus is a freakish horror show, uh, a macabre tale of gore and violence, the likes of which you just can't find anywhere else. And it's Shakespeare. It's Shakespeare. And, you know, I'm required to teach Shakespeare. I'm supposed to teach Shakespeare. Um, I'm supposed to teach Hamlet. And Hamlet is great, and it's especially great if you're interested in Shakespeare. But what do you do if you're not interested in Shakespeare? Oh, well, then you read a play where, like, more people die brutally and violently than in any other play that Shakespeare ever wrote. The comic relief in the play, there's only one bit of comic relief in the entire play. And that's where, depending on whether you're reading the quarto version or the folio version, it's either a country fellow, which I believe is the folio version, or a clown, which I believe is the quarto version. I prefer the clown. It's funnier that way, but that's just me. Anyway, so... Uh, a clown shows up and Titus is like, hey, we are you headed to the emperor? He's like, yeah, my uncle punched out one of the emperor's men. And so I'm trying to, you know, m make my peace. I, I'm going to bring him some pigeons. It's not much. It's all I got I'm trying to do a thing. And they're like, hey, can you take him a message? And so they write this message. And by this point, like, 
the the very mention of the name Titus just sends the emperor into fits of rage. He's very upset about it. Anyway, yeah, it's very. What if I just move my mouse like this? I realize I've been standing still for a while. Um, anyway, it just sends him into fits of rage. He's furious with Titus at this point in the play, and um. So the clown, he doesn't have very many lines in the play. He basically comes along, and uh, they're like, "Hey, you are you doing a thing?" And he's like, "Ha ha! I will say several puns in a row." And they're like, "Oh, this freaking guy!" And then they're like, "Hey, can you take a message to the emperor for us?" And he's like, "Sure." That sounds like a great thing. And they're like, oh, you're going to get rewarded for it and everything. He's going to be so happy to see you. Uh, and then he shows up in the emperor's court and is like, hey, I brought you a letter. And uh, yeah, the emperor takes one look at it and is like, <coughs> get him out of here. Take him and hang him. And that's hilarious. Oh, that tree just sprung to life. Uh, it's hilarious because like there are many pointless and senseless deaths in the play, but that's the most pointless and senseless of a character that like shows up for half a second and is like, "Hey, I'm a clown," and they're like, "Go talk to the emperor," and he's like, "Okay," and then the emperor is like, "You, you're gonna die," and he's like, "But I'm a clown." <laughs> like, and that's the funny part. That's the silly, the silly goose part of Titus. And the rest of it is like, you know, just think of the goriest thing you can think of. I would give you actual examples, but I don't want to spoil it. If you, I, I'll, I'll tell you this, okay? There's an episode of South Park that is based off of Titus Andronicus, and that episode of South Park, which is known for being one of the most brutal episodes is nowhere near as brutal as Titus Andronicus. And I'm not kidding. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing that teacher thing where like, hey, this is going to be fun, you know? And meanwhile, you're like, oh, it's teacher fun. It's not actual fun. Titus Andronicus is legit, gory, crazy nonsense. Like, I can't even show the movie version. There's a movie version. It's got Anthony Hopkins in it, you know, uh, Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter, him <laughs> playing the, t the titular role of Titus. Anyway, yeah, I can't show it because, first of all, the movie version doesn't even show everything that they could show because um, then it wouldn't just be rated R. It would be rated a lot worse. And... Um, also, it's rated R, so I can't show it in school. If it were college, I'd be able to show it. But if it were college, the, the difference when, with college is a student asked me, like, what's different between high school and college? And I was like, well, it's easy. In college, everybody who's there technically wants to be there. That's the, that's the big difference is that people actually want to be there. In high school, it's like, well, I have to take this class. I wouldn't have signed up for it. I have to be here. <laughs> like... All right. Awesome. Anyway, people. Uh, so, yeah, I teach the Titus Andronicus. Why? Because it actually has a really great lesson. Uh, a lesson about the pointlessness of some types of violence. And, you know, I have students who have these tendencies, like, you know, who come from high honor cultures where it's like, no, I have to protect my honor. And it's like, for who? Who's going to be like, wow, what an honorable guy because he punched this other guy in the face for seemingly no reason. Um, and so Titus Andronicus teaches you to not do crap like that. Teaches you to do better and be better. It's a great moral lesson at the heart of Titus Andronicus in spite of the fact that it's like brutally violent. Like so, so very violent. Your brain's not prepared for how violent it is. Oh, that's right. I made charcoal. Hooray me. Anyway. I need to make more charcoal because I got to make torches and whatnot. Anyway, people. Uh, yeah, this is going to be it for me on this episode of Minecraft. Um, 
anyway, had a fun one. This one will be much better than the other one. Uh, yeah, so to that girl who was cursing me out for calling her 14 times in a row, yeah, I called each one of those numbers because they called me 14 times in a row, so I called each number individually. Well, FaceTimed it 14 times in a row just to be like, let's see how you like it. You know, it's a little childish and immature on my part. But it's also the only way I could think of to make them not call me. Uh, the funny thing is, and this is the point that I was trying to get at earlier when I went on that whole jag about education. I was setting up to proctor the AZ Merit when I got the call again. I, I was not proctoring the test. It was not in the middle of a test. Don't freaking come at me with that. Um, but uh, students were entering and... I was telling them, like, put your backpacks over here, sign in over here. And it was another, like, you know, 15 minutes before we had everybody in the classroom, sat down at the right computers, um, you know, and, and just the basics before we even begin all of the mandatory. There's all the things that I have to read uh, in order for it to be a valid test session. They have to hear me read these specific words in this specific order because that makes it official it's a silly thing but that's the way it is so it was well before that part uh so the final number i believe it's the final number uh facetimed me one more time and i blocked that number because as it turns out all the other ones um i blocked them and then they weren't facetiming me and so maybe i just pointlessly harassed children i hope not for the love of God, I hope not. I hope they all blocked me and that we're all just going to go on with our lives. And I seriously wish them well. Like, best of luck to you. You know, like, your Hispanic kids living, like, based on their area code, they live right here in my state. You live in a state that's, you know, deeply racist against people like yourself. And I'm sorry that that's so. And I'm sorry that, like, you assume that I was a creep and not like because how many like random calls do you get that's like hey I'm an advocate I'm an advocate for you like I I feel your pains and like hey anything I can do to like help make your burdens lighter let's let's kick this patriarchy down together like <laughs> how many calls like that do you get in a day none anyway so yeah sorry that I harass children and anyway, yeah, I got the final call, and so I answered it, and I got the tape on my phone, and I just let them listen to me tell students where to sit and stuff, and and eventually they got bored and hung up, because I was like, yeah, of course you're going to get bored, and then I l looked up the number that had FaceTimed me, and then I blocked it, and I think it's the last one. I think it's the last one. I hope it's the last one. Anyway, uh, what a what a fun time that was. Like, you know, and it's it's nobody's fault. Like, they're a close knit family, and they're just trying to stay in contact with each other. And they accidentally got a wrong number. But like, you know, how many times do you just hit the the group? When you know that like, oh, this is the group, this is the group that I, when I hit this button, it's going to call everybody in the group and it's going to be fine. And then like, because I have one of those that, you know, um, when we throw parties for teachers at my house and uh, we'd be like, hey, teachers, come hang out at my house and drink adult beverages and play uh, games that we can't play when the students are around. <laughs> You know, like, uh, we play, like, Cards Against Humanity and stuff. Stuff like that. that that's the kind of stuff we get into. And, and adult-type beverages. Anyway, uh, so, yeah. Um, we have a, a group chat, and there's people who, like, if I hit the wrong one, I'm going to get teachers who are, you know, teaching in different states now. And they'll be like, hey, come to our house on Friday. And they'll be like, uh, yeah, that's not going to happen, chief. I, I'm in Minnesota right now. <laughs> like, so I can see how it happens. I should have been, I should have, like, all of this, like, forgiveness that I'm feeling right now and all of this, like, rational thinking that I'm having right now, I should have just had this from the beginning. But you know what? We don't always 
you know, hit the right response button. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, I feel like that girl who was so rude to me, maybe she didn't hit the right response button. And maybe if she were given the opportunity to do it again, she would not be so incredibly, incredibly mean and rude to me, even though, like, I mean, maybe she had her reasons. She definitely had her reasons. Let's face it. Anyway, people, yeah, let's not belabor this point any longer than we belabored it. I think the situation is solved. I hope it is. And I, I bear no ill will to anyone. And now I'm going to go to bed because I can. And bed is awesome. So, all right, people, have a lovely time. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.